This is a demonstration of the chest tube assessment. Hello, Mrs. Smith. How are you doing today? I'm My fine. Name is Summer. I'm going to be your nurse for today. Okay. Can you tell me your full name? Jenny Smith. Okay. And what's your date of birth? 1 1 1940. Do you have any allergies? No. Okay. Are you having any pain today? No. Okay, good. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm good and dry, so I can get my gloves on. I'm just going to check your chest tube. Uh, placement and check your lung sounds to make sure that everything is okay. All right. I'm just going to pull your gown down a little bit so that I can get to your chest. All right. Listen to your lung sounds. Take a deep breath in and out for me. Deep breath. Again, in and out. Again. Deep breath in and out. Again. Deep breath. The lung sounds are slightly diminished on the right lower thigh, which is to be expected with chest tube. Checking the right middle lobe for breath sounds. Deep breath in and out, please. Right middle lobe breath sounds are slightly diminished, which is to be expected with chest tube. Okay. I'm going to check the site. Make sure that the tape is intact, the dressing is intact, the skin is dry, there's no subcutaneous emphysema, no crackling sounds or crunchiness when I palpate, there's no drainage, mild tenderness upon palpation. I'm going to check to make sure that the, the tube is taped and secured to the body in two separate places, which it is. I'm going to continue down the tube to check the connections to make sure they're secure and taped. I work my way down to the clamp. It's clamped for demonstration purposes only. In the hospital, you will see this. But because the mannequin has no negative pressure in their lung cavity, we have to keep it clamped for us to show you how to assess the chest tube drainage system. The chest tube must be smooth along the side of the patient on the bed, no dependent loops. This is a dependent loop. We don't want this. So we make sure the connections are good. We check the bellow to make sure suction is on and continuous. And as you can see, when I remove suction, the bellow disappears. When I reconnect suction, the bellow reappears. This is the pressure that it's set to. This is done by physician orders only. Next, we check the water chamber to make sure that the water level is equal to two centimeter mark here. If it's not, we need to add water or remove water. You check for bubbling. We don't want bubbling. Bubbling means there's a problem with the connection. Also, with the breath sounds, you will see a rise and fall of the water level, plus this little ball in here will rise and fall with each breath sound. There's no breath right now because it's a mannequin, not a human. For the drainage system here, this is where the drainage comes. You never empty this. It's a continuous collection of drainage. With each shift, you'll mark it with either tape or a marker, time and date at the level it is when you end your shift.
Also at the bedside, you want to keep tape in case you need to reinforce the chest tube. You're going to want saline in case it, the chest tube becomes detached or tubing comes loose um, and you want to submerge it into the saline to keep it sterile or clean. You're also going to want some Vaseline gauze in case the chest tube gets dislodged or falls out that you can plug the hole with the Vaseline gauze. Also, when you do transport the patient, what you're going to do is there's going to be hooks on the drainage system. You pull these hooks up, you hang it low, right here. You don't put it on the bed with the patient. You never want, you always want to keep the level below the patient. And then you just remove the suction and it'll be to gravity.